We are going to have a good time. Because like I say that I want we want to see transformation. We want to see a mindset change. The reason for gathering champions. Because I want to see people change. I want to see total transformation. I am one person who moves around the country and my heart is weeping when I see how the nation is. When I see how people react. When I see people respond. When I see the people, the lives. When I see how people behave. I weep in my heart. Sometimes I ask God. And I say, God. Did you concentrate on giving us everything beautiful? So you concentrated on creating everything beautiful. That when, when you came to us, as black people, did you miss an element? Is there anything God that you missed in us? Sometimes I behave like an unbeliever. And I ask God questions. Because when I see how people behave, when I see how people drive in Kampala, reckless, as if they have no life. Today I was at Gaba. And I saw a moving island. And I said, look at the beauty, look at the wonders. And I dipped my hand in the water. And I tested it. Fresh water. Not salty. I've been to the Atlantic Ocean. I've been to the Indian Ocean. I've been to the Pacific Ocean. The water is Salty. But our water here fresh. fresh. But when I turn my eyes and I look at the people, and I say, God, is there a chip that you forget to put in us? And I say, God, we have these countries that have. You know, calamities. They have storms. Floods. We don't have the kind of things here. And I say, God, why don't we have those calamities? Why don't we have those calamities? Maybe they would have woken us. We saw people sailing in the boats with no life jacket and my father asked me so why don't they have life jacket and i say papa because they know the lake is calm. They know that the lake is always calm. So they don't expect to have a storm. That's why they don't even bother to put on life jacket. People are lakeless. But we are here today to pursue God's purpose in our lives. The reason why we are here with Gathering Champions 2024 is to learn how to pursue His purpose. And I want you to open your Bibles. Go to Romans chapter 8 verse 28. The Bible says, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. All things work together for good. They don't work for good for everybody. They work for good for those 
for those who are the code according to his purpose. 29, for whom he forewarned you, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. People of God, listen. You cannot pursue God's purpose until you can see yourself in the inside of you. You gotta be able to have spiritual eyes so you can see yourself in the inside. And when you see yourself in the inside, then you begin to see where you are going. You know why we are suffering? Because we don't see far beyond than where we are. You know why we have kind of roads? That kind of road. Lord, all good. Because we don't have those who can see far beyond than where they are. They are pursuing their own purpose. They are not pursuing the purpose of God in them. And then we begin to pursue his purpose. Then we will live in this poverty. Uganda is not poor. Uganda is not poor. Africa is not poor. Africa is not poor. We have everything. Then why do, why do they call us a third world? And then we look at those nations. And we call them developed countries. There is no such a thing as a developing country. It is the people who are developed here. Their mindset changes. The way they do things change. They see things differently. This is a porcelain paper wrapped on the water bottle. When I scratch it off, I find it so difficult to throw it. You know why? Because my mind is set. My mind is set. It's changed. You know what I do? I put it in my pocket. That when I'm in an area where there is a trash can, I will put it out and throw it. But many of us, it's no problem. No matter where you are, you scrub it off, you throw it. As if it's normal. And then we look at those people, what we call the verb countries. You unwrap a sweetie and you put that wrap in your pocket. Because you see it's not normal to throw it on the ground, to throw it anywhere. I've seen people here even when they're driving, these big cars, they roll their windows down. And then they throw everything they have. On the main street, they have money. They are rich. But they are minded. They are minded. It's poor. It's poor. Is poor. of God, listen. If they are going to be a transformation in Africa, that transformation will start in the church. If they are going to be a transformation, transformation will come from the church. Until we begin to read the Bible and we understand it and we interpret the scriptures correctly. 
I'm not here to try to put preachers down. But many preachers, they read the Bible to get something to preach. They don't read the Bible for them to understand it and interpret it correctly. That's why we have holy rice. That's why we have holy water. That's why we have all the happens. Because when they read the Bible, they are looking for what to preach. They are looking for scriptures that they can manipulate. But until we begin to interpret scriptures correctly, and we begin to pursue his purpose, and adapt a vision of our nation, a vision of our life, a vision of our family, you know, I cry every day. My heart weeps every day. And I say, Lord, I am not going to live to, to see the nation, the Africa, the Uganda that I want to see. Because the leaders are not in position for transformation. The followers are not in position to change. I don't know if I'm whether I'm preaching good tonight. But the reason for this conference gathering champions is to see total transformation. Is to see your life. To see your neighborhood. To see your village. To see your nation. Change. We fly and go overseas. We love our country. We love our continent. continent. I am privileged. I've traveled all the continents. There is no continent like Africa. The people. Beautiful. So nice. Welcoming. I meet you in a minute. We are friends. We talk. We chat. As if we've seen ourselves for years. In my neighborhood where I am. It's four years plus. My immediate neighbor. I don't even know them. In my neighborhood. My house is here. The next house, I don't know them. If I don't know this person, do you think I know the others? What kind of life is that? But you know the whole village. You know almost the whole town. You sit in the taxi. And then you start chatting. As if you've seen yourself you, you, for years. You sit on the border border. The border border will talk to you as if he knows everything about you. You people, you don't know the beauty of Africa. And I think until we begin to preach the beauty of our continent, the beauty of our nation, oh my God, thank you. Most of you don't appreciate the food that we have. The fruits. Pineapple. Oh my God. Watermelon. Watermelon. Oh Mango! Amy. Oh my God! Oh, you know, last night we went home. 
my house with with uh, with, uh, with 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 my spiritual father we have a mango we were standing there talking <laughs> the beauty of africa over africa some of you, you say, mm, if, if, if Uganda is, is beautiful, why do you Uganda, come here? And then you try and go back. It is the situation that takes us back. We don't go back because we love there. We go there because we are trying to survive. Have a vision for your life. Because vision is the source of hope. The hope of life is from a vision. Vision is the key to unlock the gates of what was and what will be. Have a vision for your life. Our nations are crumbling because of lack of vision. Pastors don't have vision. Political leaders don't have a vision. Fathers and mothers don't have a vision. Brothers and sisters don't have a vision. And God. God. God only moves and works with people who have a vision. That's why God told Abraham when Ruth walked away from Abraham God came to Abraham and God said whatever you see I give to you until you see it I say until you see it God won't give it to you No, 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 no until you see it, God won't give it to you. Thank you. Why don't we have a vision for our lives? Why leaders don't have vision for our continent? Why? Is it the preachers that we are not doing the right thing? Is it the fathers and mothers that are not raising their families right? What is the problem with us? What's the problem? You know, the more I grow, the more I try not to excite the congregation. The more I grow, maybe the more getting understanding. The more I grow, the more I love my country. The more I love my continent. Is it because we are a younger generation? But we have an older generation of leaders. Is it because we have an older generation of leaders? What is our problem? Church, help me. What is our problem? Are we not praying enough? But all the nations, all the continents, the continents that I've traveled to, I've not seen any continent that plays like the continent of Africa. If it is a player, 
We qualify to be developed countries, to be a developed continent. But I also come to understand that God doesn't give you what you pray for. God can only give you what you can manage. Maybe we are not good managers. We don't know how to manage the resources. When we discover oil, some people think they own the oil. When we discovered gold, a few people claim to own it. <laughs> I ask myself a lot of questions. And most of them I can't find answers. So God give us answers. We pray that never before. We call your name. We fast it. God. Mokama. What is it? Chichicho. But when I look at the children of Israel, they spent 40 years in the wilderness. 40 years. Everything was free. Food was free. National water was free. Umeme was free. The clothing companies were free. The shoe companies were free. Because the Bible says their clothes never worn out. All of 40 years. But when they cross over Jordan, everything for free stop. God, where are we? Are we still in the wilderness? But the taxes are so high. Because if we are in, in the wilderness, we wouldn't be paying taxes. Taxes are so high. God, have we crossed over? So when the children of Israel crossed, Everything for free stop. And God said, since you have crossed over, you have to work for everything. If you want food, go and sow the seeds. If you want water, you have to dig the well. In the wilderness, they struck the rock. Water guns out. Every day. There was free food fresh. Fresh manna. Fresh. 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 Every day. When they crossed over. Everything stopped for free. And God said, it's now management. To manage them. So God, are we lacking the element to manage it? When the children of Israel crossed over, management began. So we are not in the wilderness. We cross over, but we are not even yet into the promised land. The children of Israel, they were 40 years. This nation is what, 60 what, 62 years 
And they are lying us. Because this nation has been here more than 62 years. So the colonizers claim that all the years that they they were governing us. We never existed. We were not a nation. That's why even in the in, in geograph, yes, in geography. The first man to discover even now. Who? Tell me some of you who did the geography. Who discovered the white man to discover? Source of river now. John who? John speak. John who? John speak. John speak, right? So he was the first man to discover. Livanai, right? What about the people that were in the land before he came? For those that were not human. Until he came. The liver was there. And they used to call it liver what? What? Liver nalubare, right? Mugan nalubare. Huh? Nalubare. Ochiira. Ochiira. Our grand, great grandparents. They called it. Omugachira. So they discovered it. Many years. But they came. They brainwashed us. And we believed it. They use the Bible. They interpreted it the way they wanted. Today, we can read, seek the knowledge of God, pursue his purpose, interpret the scriptures, and the nation must change. Your lives must change. Pursue his purpose. Assue his purpose. Understand his principles. Walk with his principles. And see how your life will change. Your being here tonight is not accidental. That's why my spiritual father said that God is going to do the unusual. Transformation starts from today. I want you to see your village, your neighborhood, your house. You see it transformed. Be the first to do something different. Be the first to correct the garbage. Be the first one to throw everything everywhere. Be the first. Be the first. Be the first. Be the first. Some people ask me when I, I leap off that plastic on the bottle. Where is my plastic? When I leap it off and I keep it some people ask me, what difference does this make? What difference does it make? The difference it makes is that I didn't just throw it away. That's the difference. If I start, if I start to do that, and you follow me, and another person follows you. And the person next to you follows you. And that person follows you. By the time we know. The whole village. The whole neighborhood. Will be transformed. When God created the, 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 the human being. He didn't create 7 billion people. He created Adam. He pulled Eve out of Adam. The 7 billion people. Came out of those two. It came from how many? Transformation is nothing from who? 
Transformation will start from who? Enchuka chuke tani kanani. Egenda kutani kila wa. It will start from where? Atonda nga anakola ina watani kila. It starts from somewhere. God is always looking at where to start. God is always looking asking himself where can I start? When God said 5,000 people he started with just five rows just a little meal and he fed 5,000. There is always a starting point let you be the starting point. Let you be the starting point of transformation. Be the first. Be the first. Be the first. What difference does it make? It is that difference that you do. What you do makes a difference. Have a vision. Vision sets you free from the limitations. It is the vision that makes the unseen visible. Vision makes suffering and disappointments bearable. You know why your pastor is here today? You know why we have this beautiful building? My wife shared me the first service that they had. You know what they did? They pulled out the saucepan and they beat it. When they were praising Lord. Look at today. This man has gone through suffering. He has gone through disappointments. And you know why? Because he had this vision in him. From day one of fire center. Even though they were in the car garage. Right? And they put out saucepans. He was seeing this. When people saw him in the car garage. When people saw him in the car garage. Using saucepans. For himself. He was seeing this. You may see me here. But I'm already there. I'm using saucepans. But I will have a keyboard. Of about 10 million. Vision will help you to go through suffering and disappointments. Go to sleep. Close your eyes. Let people talk. Let them say that you are you 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 nobody. You can't mount to anything. Just laugh at them. You tell them. You see me walking, but I see myself driving. You see me broke, but I'm broke for you. I am broke for you. I am broke for you, but I'm not broke for myself. You didn't see that. They will see you walking. They will say you broke. You know when people come and they want to get money from you. And they say, can you, can you, can you borrow me money? Then you say, I'm broke. So when you come to borrow money from me, when you come to borrow money from me, and I say, I'm broke, then you say, I'm broke for you. You say, I'm not broke for myself. I'm broke for you. And you say, I'm broke for you. And you say, I'm broke for you. I'm broke for myself. I'm broke for you. Amen. When you have a vision, life is sweet. When you have a vision, I remember those days. I remember those days. I remember this one night. Three months when my mother's passed away. 
I didn't have lunch. I didn't have dinner. About three in the morning. I went out from my small apartment. I don't like that word apartment. Because it was not even a house. So I came out of the door. Three in the morning. Three in the morning. I sat down. And I began to weep. I felt like dying. My stomach was burning. I didn't have anything. And I began to wish. I wish my mother was here. You know when you are 20, 19, 20? You know how life is? You don't know anything? Your mother who was everything is gone. And I wept. Didn't have anything. Didn't have anything. Today, I spend all day without wanting to eat anything. Your pastor can tell you we shall have so many dogs in the fridge. Yeah, the hearty dogs. The hearty dogs. I, I call them dogs when they're in the fridge. And then I would go without eating anything. And the pastor would be like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm like, I'm okay. For the food is not a problem. Food is no longer a problem. Amen. But there was those days. There are going to be days in your life. Days of challenge. Days of pain. Days of suffering. But God has not forsaken you. Those are days of testimony. God is passing you somewhere. So that when you get a platform like this, you will have something to give him the glory. Something that will glorify him. Amen. Get yourself a vision. When I sat down, when Natula was see. Even though my stomach was burning. But you know what I was calling myself? You know what my friends used to call me? They call me Ameri. Ameri. Ameri means America. Because from when I was a little boy. I was dreaming to be in America. Have you heard this song? Oh, I love it. What song is that? There's this old man, I think he's from Zambia or Zimbabwe. He sings like, when I was a little boy, I dreamed to sing in America. Have you heard that song? That song has about four or five million views. So, from when I was a little boy, even when there was a challenge, please don't change the mic unless you know the mic is on. Please don't do that again. When I was a little boy, I still had a vision. Even when I was going through suffering, I was seeing myself in America. I am not in America by accident. I am in America because I dreamed it. Even the first day that I stepped in America. 
I told them at the immigration. immigration. I have come here because I want to stay here. I went because I knew what I wanted. Because I had a dream. Nobody could kill my dream. Even when the counselor at the American Embassy, I went there. He denied me a visa. He put in my passport rejection. And he looked in my eyes. And he said, You will never go to America. I will never give you a visa. He was not a God. Amen. Never joke with a person who has a dream. When my daddy met me or when we met each other, he came to me. Actually, when the first day, we met. It was in a conference. I was sitting down. He preached. He finished. He came to me. And he said. I see greater things in your life. And I want to be there. To witness. What God is going to do in your life. I want to be your spiritual father. Because I want to pray for you. I want to prophesy over you. And he said. I see. I see. You are doing a lot of things. You are moving all over the continents. You need to slow down. I was on a social media everywhere. I cut it off. Moving nations aimlessly without even doing homework. I cut it off. Today, I'm one step to make a million dollar. There are people that God is going to bring in your life. You got to have a discerning spirit. You have to listen to them. Obey them. Kneel under their feet. And ask for guidance. Listen for them. Seek for their mantle. Thank you, Papa. You have 10 pastors. You have a lunchtime pastor. You have a morning glory pastor. You have a Sunday pastor. You have that one that prays for your business. You have that one that prays for you to get married. Who is your pastor? At lunchtime, when I ask you who is your pastor, <laughs> my pastor. That one is mm -hmm. salt. Mm -hmm. You are not my pastor. 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 You you have so many pastors. You don't even know who is your spiritual pastor. Who is your spiritual father? Then at the end of the day, you look at Pastor Robert. And then he says, This pastor is anointed. When God is looking for your address, you can't even find it. When God is looking for your for your for your address, when God is looking for your spiritual address, can't find you. You are everywhere. Everybody is your pastor. You think everybody is praying for you? Everybody is looking for your money. The small money that you have. This man loves me. Not of what he wants from me. He loves me for me to be better. He loves me. 
Who loves you? Anya kwa gala. Who loves you for who you are? Anya kwa gala Rachel Chori. Who loves you? Anya kwa gala. You know, last year, I flew and I went to UK. And when I was going, so Papa wanted to know my program. And he said, what is your program? And I said, Papa, I don't have a program. You are my program. So I flew from US to UK to spend time with my spiritual father. And we took a long walk in the city. Talking. When we were coming back, we took a bus. And like we couldn't reach home. And I said, Papa, did we walk this distance? When you are spending time with a person that you love, you guys, God can even stop the time. <laughs> For some of you, who have not committed yourselves to spiritual fathers. This is a challenge for you. Our God is real. If you think you are going to manipulate him. So that you can get a miracle. You are lying to yourself. Commit yourself to a man of God, to a woman of God. Sit down. Obey the instruction. Let me tell you something. Until you are willing to obey the instruction, Jesus comes at the pool. Yes, after 38 years, this guy at the pool, this guy was there waiting for the angel. The angel comes, gets in the water, stir it up. Whoever jumps in first was made whole. But this person, for 38 years, Nobody could, could help him. When the angel says the water, somebody jumps in before they help him. Jesus comes at the pool and looks at this God. Say, if you want to get home, stand up. Instruction. He stood up. Made a hole. The lepers come. So Jesus, yes, help us. We want to get whole. Jesus tell them, yes, go the priests. While they are walking, they were made whole. Instruction. Naman comes to the prophet. The prophet tells him, go and dip yourself in the liver seven times. At the first, Naman say no. You know, I'm a general. I'm a general. I fought Six years in the bush. What are you talking about? I'm a general. He suffered. But this little girl speaks to that general. After having seen him suffering, why don't you just do what the man of God is saying? Why don't you just obey the instruction? When he obeyed the instruction, he was made whole. But for you, 
You want to take the that you want to receive the miracle without the instruction? God is a God of instruction. If you want a promotion, God will give you an instruction. If if you want to get married, God will give you the instruction. If you want to see the better nation, a better country, a better city, there is an instruction. You know why we don't see any transformation? Because we don't like instructions. We don't obey instructions. We don't listen to leaders. We don't. But our God is a God of instruction. Prophet comes to this woman. The widow who had lost her husband. The creditors wanted to take her children. So the prophet shows up. And they say, what is it that you have? What is it that you have? And the prophet said, get what you have. Go in the villages. Boil all the pots. Bring them in your house. When she brought them, the prophet told that woman, fill them with what you have. When she did what the prophet said, her poverty vanished. What happened? Instruction. Instruction. Africa or Uganda is, is a difficult country. Africa or Uganda. I mean, people have big headache. They have big headache. When you block this road here, and you say you can't go there, someone will come and say, they put this here. Why? What is it there that they don't want to see? Then they will find a way to go through. The American people, they put a sign, detour this way, detour this way. They won't ask a question that why they will follow the, 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 the sign. Africans? Uh, what is it that they don't want us to see? No wonder we are suffering. Sometimes we blame the white people. We blame the leaders. The leaders blame the white people too. The leaders will blame the, the, the population. The population blames the leaders. The husband blames the wife. The wife blames the husband. The children blames daddy. Daddy blames mom. Everybody's blaming everybody. You know, exposure is bad. You know why? Because when you are exposed, you differentiate from the bad from the good. And at the same time, being unexposed is a disease. It's cancer. cancer. It's you when yeah. you don't know. Because when you see something, whatever you see, you think is the best. We need a total transformation. We need to pursue his will. And his will 
is about instruction. Obey our leaders. Obey those that are in authority. Do not hide, hide the goods. I'm one person who doesn't want to pay bribe. But sometimes this Uganda will make you to pay the bribe. Uganda will force you, will push you to the wall. And you have no way until you have to pay the bribe. I weep so much for my country. It's a crime. Kaba, buli runaku, omutima guange kukaba. I weep on a daily, my heart weeps on a daily. E guanga liya fegaga. Our country is rich. Our country is beautiful. We have that difference on our lives. I have people who have come here. And as soon as they walk out of the airport, they say, wow. You people, you are different. If it is, you stop stealing, then we shall be more better. Because as soon as they enter into the country, then I have to tell them make sure your phone is in the pocket. Make sure your, your passport is deep in the pocket. When we, we drive and make sure the, 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 the glass is, is sealed up. The, the, you know, it's and this is the same person who say that, wow, you are so beautiful. And then I'm lecturing that person to be careful over his belongings. And this is one thing I hate. Come for prayers. But make sure you bring your burger with you. That's one statement I had. That's one statement I had. But in order to protect you, I have to tell you, the person next to you doesn't come to pray. He has come for your bag. Uganda, that is our Uganda. Your neighbor. I'm not telling you. But your neighbor. I'm not talking about you. But your neighbor. He came for your bag. If you live and look at me, he's going to go with it. In church. Really? Yeah. You came to love and you came to steal in church. I came, you came, I thought you came to say thanks. But you forgot that you came to say thanks. You forgot that you came to say thanks. You forgot that you came to say thanks. Lord, I thank you. I left the bag. Really? That is our nation. Until we are bold enough to stand on the pulpit and say, stop your foolishness. Stop your foolishness. We chase away your theft. If you came to store to steal, I command the spirit of the Lord to save you. One day you stand. I'm gathering champions. Gathering champions. I come to steal. But 
God. Mkama kwamba unakuwa leo. Chukuile ngale zamani. But that's the name of Jesus. Mkama waambo mtima go. May God cultivate your heart. Mkama waambe ebirozo byo. Take over your mind. Mkama waambe ukole nchamu eyo. Can you imagine if we are all here being transformed? And we go into those neighborhoods. We tell them about the gospel of transformation. Are you an example? Making sure that trash is not thrown everywhere. When they see by your actions, they see your speaking. When you, when you, you, can you imagine if all of us we go out there and we take a transformation? And if there are hundred churches with this congregation, a hundred churches times this congregation, do you know the transformation we can take? You know, we went to the shop today. Was it last night? We were buying a power bank. And I say, you know, after we pay, and we step out of the shop and we came to find out that this is not what we wanted and we take it back I said Papa do you know they won't take it you pay you just stepped out of the shop and then you go back five Means they won't take it back. They won't. They won't. What kind of trading is that? But do you know if there are a hundred churches? in this congregation and we take this transformation into, into the neighborhood into the business world into politics you know how much damage we can do the devil you know how much damage we can do to the devil God is always looking for for someone to start with. One person. To start with. To deliver the children of Israel. After those so many years from Egypt. He started with Moses. One person. One person. One person. We are so bad. We are too bad. But our country is good. Do you know Bugaga? It has wealth. It has everything. But we are bad. Stand up on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stuka kumigereno. Just close your eyes. Zibiri za kumasogo. And begin to envision. A better nation. Begin to envision. A better neighborhood. Begin to envision. Envision yourself in a fulfilled life. Begin to Envision yourself having everything that you want. Envision a total transformation. Envision yourself being the nation where there is fresh water coming 
to your houses everywhere. Envision yourself living in a, in a country where lords are all tamer. Just envision yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, these people have closed their eyes because they want their spiritual eyes to see. To see a total transformation. They want to see themselves in the promised land. A land that flows with milk and honey. A land where there is total management. Father God, at this very moment, let there be transfer of visions. Those who didn't have spiritual eyes, those who could not see far beyond and where they are, please God, do something. Do something unusual. Open their spiritual eyes so that they can see far beyond. God, Africa is not third world. Africa is not a poor continent. Africa is a continent. If this continent was poor, you wouldn't have given us uh, 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 minerals. If this continent was poor, you would have given us good, 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 good weather. The soil. The landscape. landscape. Father, we are not poor. It is our mind. Our mindset. Hey. Our intellectual understanding. Father God, as we appear to Abraham. And you say to Abraham. Open your eyes. See, look. Whatever you see. I give unto you. King of glory. Let the spiritual eyes see what Abraham saw. Let the spiritual eyes see what Abraham saw. Father God, let there be a transformation. Let there be a transfer of mindsets. Let there be a transfer of understanding. Let there be a transfer of direction because you are God of understanding. You are God of understanding. You are God of, you are God of direction. Visit this congregation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us give God a clap offering. Let us give God a clap offering. Let us give God a clap offering. Let us give God a clap offering.